Welcome to the Backcourt Podcast. I'm your host, Ramon Galloway. To my left, I got Marcus Teague, a.k.a. Mook. What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? To my right, I got Deron Lamb, a.k.a. D. Lamb. What's good, y'all? Let's talk. And today, we have a special guest, one of the greatest coaches of all time, mm -hmm. champion, Coach Calipari. Give it up for Coach Cal, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's Appreciate up, Coach? You. Appreciate you for joining us. At that backcourt right there. Oh, won yeah. a national championship. <laughs> Talk about won it, coach. And, 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 I, and I called prior to the game that Deron Lamb's going big. Yeah. Marcus Teague, did I not? You did. Yes, I sir. called it. He went, he went, and he went up for too. 22. Yeah, I remember that. And coach. then, told me that. And then I, what about we play Iowa? Yeah. And they, or Iowa, Iowa, Iowa State. State. And they weren't going to play Marcus Teague. Yeah. They were like backing away. And dude right. went for like 25. <laughs> said, I don't know who you're not playing. Right. But yeah, you're talking about two warriors. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yeah. Two, two, two warriors right there. Yes, sir. I said, we see last night y'all got a big win, coach. How you feel about the way your team performed? You know, um, we've only been together a short time, but you guys know how that goes because all my team seem to be new guys throwing them together and trying to figure stuff out. But the whole point of last night, playing Kansas, the number one in the country, they had a couple guys out. Yeah. We had Jonas mm -hmm. uh, out, Jonas Adu, mm -hmm. who's a big guy, all conference. But one, we wanted to look organized right? because we – now you two know how I practice, right? <laughs> for the last two weeks, we've had five players. Oh man, that's it. Not not seven, not eight. Man. Come on, man. You guys, you went through my practices, yeah, right? That's tough. I that's had tough. to have my team play against GAs. We have yet to scrimmage. You know, we don't scrimmage that much. I don't think yeah. I scrimmaged that much with you guys. No, so. No, I, yeah. We wanted it to look organized, pass it to each other, fight like hell, you know, defensively, and have fun so that people watching it say, now that was fun. Yeah. And I think we accomplished that. And we'd like, you know, it was an exhibition game. So winning, you know, you wanted to win, but in yeah. the, the place was, these people, we had 20,000 at an exhibition game. And yeah, they paid, okay. yeah. They had tents. They had 150 tents and a thousand students wait sleeping out two days for the tickets. Okay. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. So the energy, the energy since you've been there has been over the top. How's yeah. it been since you got yeah. on campus? I, you guys both know I'm trying to calm everybody down. Like right. I'm not a right. mad magician. No, <laughs> Duran. You know I'm not trying to build it up. I'm like, dudes, calm <laughs> down. I mean, we haven't played. You know, let us let us get together. Let us get the team together. But. Uh, you know, it, it the the biggest thing, look, when I coached you two, that were two groups of kids coming together having to deal with this, with Michael and Anthony and Duran and, and we had Terrence. People forget how good Terrence Jones was. Right. No, he's a beast. What? He's really good. <laughs> he he was a beast who could pass it, he could shoot it. Uh -huh. And then you had Darius. So we have a guy coming off the bench who was like sheesh. Yeah, but you all really had to come. You had to come together. Yeah, we yeah. had to be patient, Duran, with our point guard for a while, didn't we? <laughs> you had to, you got to, always. Oh, yeah. You be on the point guard, coach. <laughs> hey, you remember me walking in saying he is my point guard? No, I remember so that. We all. You remember it, Mark? Yes, sir. Mark. Yeah, I remember, I, coach. Mark, I said, I said, you are my point because. You struggled a little bit, and yeah. I, you know, some guys were there moving in their seats and stuff, yeah. and I'm like, dudes, that that right there, he's my point guard, definitely. And everybody did their job. I mean, last game, do you remember Anthony Davis in the national championship game? He was one for ten. Yeah, <laughs> controlled it. That was crazy. Controlled it on the defensive crazy. side. Mm -hmm. He did. And you remember when he walked in the locker room and said, yeah. I don't know what's going on. I can't make a shot, but I'm going to rebound every ball. I'm going to play defense. I'm blocking shots. The rest of you guys score the balls. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Duran took it literally and shot every <laughs> ball. 
Yo, coach, he came up to me and, and told me during the game, he told me, yo, D Lamb, you scoring our rebounds. So I was like, all right, I got you. That's, that's the kind yeah, of team man. we had, though. Everybody yeah. just kind of played for each other. It's kind of like, about, you feel like, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I want to hear you. Yeah, do you feel like it's hard to get guys that young to buy into that? Because from day one, I felt like we all just jailed. We just had a good chemistry with each other. It was it was no ego. What? We just was together. Yeah, and but it, but everybody was comfortable in their skin. Yes, you right. came on a visit, and you <laughs> played pickup. Do you remember? Yeah. You played pickup, and John you walked Moore. away saying, "I'm good enough," because everybody kept telling you what. You I ain't good enough to yeah. go that. Yeah. yeah, you went in that thing and you played, and you're like, I don't know what you dudes are talking about. I'm as mm. good as any of these guys. I'm fine. That but was everybody weird. was comfortable in their own skin and who yeah, they were as a player. And then it became, do we really want to win a national title? Then we got to do this collectively, everybody. And the thing that's gotten harder um, is to win with young guys like I did with you. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, all these other teams are like 24 and 25. Right. So last year, our average age was 19, 19 four. Yeah. Wow. Every team we played against was 23 or 24. That's four or five years. Yeah, it was grown it's long. So now I'm point. saying maybe four freshmen, a couple guys return, a couple older transfers, and let's go to war. And that's right. what I've done here. Yeah. Last year, we had seven freshmen. Now, look. Robert Dillingham could ball. So <laughs> could Reed. Nah, so tough. could Antonio. Yeah. You know, we had the uh, Trey, Trey and DJ got hurt. Yeah. Justin Edwards just came on as the year went and played well. Last game didn't play as well, but he had had a hell of a year. Yeah. And uh, but we were too young. Mm -hmm. And when we got in that moment, like we had some games with you guys where that moment, um, and then we had enough guys that said, I'll take over. Right. And I'll right. take over. But when you're all freshmen, you're <laughs> so all like. Nobody's been there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to do it with some older guys. Yeah. But um, if you watched the game last night, my guards are really good. Yes, sir. Uh, our bigs, our bigs, you know, Big Z is, um, he's, he's what I thought he would be if we had let him in school last year we didn't it was yeah. he only played the last eight or nine games yeah okay. but um but we'll be in we're all right we're all yeah. right yo coach um talk to me about um boogie you know you're from new york that's my young guy so talk about boogie dj i know they gym rats so tell me about them please yep so duran you know boogie right yeah, boogie know. When there are games that you probably watch him and said he's as good as anybody, and there are other games you watched him and you said, "Was he in the game? I don't, <laughs> what, what? What? Why? What? What did, what did he just? Where's the spirit I saw last game? So when I recruited him, I told his mom and dad, I said, "Listen, I've seen him be one of the best players in the country, and I've also seen him be the cool guy that run with my thumbs up and act like it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. That guy, as you two know." will never get on the floor for me. You right. won't get on the floor. Right. That other guy that plays and competes and fights, you're going to play. Well, it, he's. you're not seeing that other one. Last night, the country saw him spirited, defensively spirited, passing the ball, creating. Wow. Duran, one of the best things you had was that mid-game. You mm -hmm. know, everybody now says you either go to three or a layup. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. best players have a mid game mm -hmm. that there's yeah. you can't KD. You want me to go through them, Booker, all the the guys. You had that pull up to the baseline, or you'd mm -hmm. go middle and pull up. That's what he has. Yeah, and he's really he's quick and fast, so he's been good. But he and DJ last night, forget about what they did offensively. Defensively, they bothered the ball. They turned the ball. They created turnovers. Yeah. Um, that impressed me more. Have they been like battling against each other in practice every day? <laughs> so, so it's funny because you know how I am. Yeah. So to start when we were healthy, I made those two go at each other yeah. because they raised yeah. each other. Yeah. But mm -hmm. now we got the five. Okay. You guys are going to love this story. We got the five. They had to be together. 
Do you think I told one to be the point guard or I just let it happen? <laughs> just let it happen. <laughs> you know how I am. I, you guys figure it out, right? Yeah, definitely. And Boogie took on, and DJ played off the ball, on the ball, off the ball, but both like he did in high school. Now he's got more of a comfort level. Yeah. Boogie's more comfortable with the ball. And now together, everybody's saying, geez, with Nella, you got the best three guards in the country. But yeah. they're playing off of one another and they're comfortable in their positions right now. So DJ played great last night. He, he did. DJ had swagger, swagger last night. Uh -huh. Co Coach, Coach Kyle, do you think that uh, DJ or Trevor Brazil being a returning player, that they will be the X factor for your team, or who do you think will be the X factor for your team from what you've seen so far? I think the unicorn in the group <laughs> is Adu Fierro because he is a beast. Yeah. He can do stuff the normal player in college basketball cannot do. Um, his, his shooting is better. Um, his passing is better, but he hadn't practiced in two weeks. Um, as a matter of fact, he only went this last game. He told me the day of the game he was going to go because his back had been bothering him. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably – I told him, play as many minutes as you can play. He is a three, a four. He's shooting it better. Um, he uh, – head on the rim. I mean, he is turning into his dad. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny <laughs> – I have uh, – this team has four players that I coach their fathers. Now, I don't know if that means I'm an old fart <laughs> or – You're getting old, 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 coach. 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 <laughs> old you now, Coach. And then – and I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 45. Right. So right. then – You look good, too. Look good too. <laughs> hey, and then I coached Kevin Knox, so right. Carter's right. brother. Right. But it kind of makes me good because you know – feel good because you know how hard I was that – and it wasn't, yeah, I got on you, but the standard was high. Right. And if you didn't reach for that standard, I wasn't settling it. Yeah, and right. if you needed me to be mean and nasty, I'd yeah. be mean and nasty. Yeah. If you want me to cheer you. I, if I remember right, your season, I don't think we had a bad practice. Yeah, we, I, nah, we didn't. Never, never did. <laughs> you was always I mean, everybody. Over, so, oh, so, so, <laughs> so the only game is, was the game – the game at Indiana that I went crazy. Yeah, you went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you went crazy. You went crazy in the locker room. <laughs> so I really give. I said I was on a buzzer beater. <laughs> oh yeah, and I went. I wanted you guys. You know why I did it? I didn't want you to be satisfied that we played well. Should have won the game. No, mm -hmm. yeah. we lost, and I went bonkers. Now I don't think we lost. Did we lose another game? We lost Rose in the SEC championship to Vandy. Yeah. Oh, and they all cried. That was the one they cried and all that stuff. <laughs> and they were crying. Hey, yeah. and, and we we had we had a we had a five point lead, which we never lost. Yeah. And and we missed shots down the stretch. I, I won't say Duran's name, but we missed <laughs> some shots down the stretch, and they made some shots. And all of a sudden, but it's the best thing that ever happened to us. Yeah. The mm -hmm. best thing. Now we needed that, coach. We did. Yep. You needed that. Coach, do you think that this 2011 team set a standard with you having returning players like Deron Lamb, Darius Miller, T. Jones, and T. Jones, and then you have the freshman class with Mook, Gilchrist, and Anthony Davis? It was almost like a perfect blend. Do you think you have something similar this year with the Razorbacks? Let me just say this. <laughs> that team was one of the best teams to Yo, talk, like. Coach. So I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to compare. You know, and I don't want to do that. But we, it's the same. Now understand. I think two years later, we started five freshmen in the Final Four. Right. Mm -hmm. Julius, James Young, mm -hmm. the Harrison twins, and Willie or Dakari, somebody that was a freshman. I can't remember. And and it might have been, but we we had five freshmen start. Yeah, uh, that will never happen again. Right, that will never happen. In, that a team with five freshmen will go to the final. It won't. Yeah. Believe me, never will happen. 
and it won't happen because you can't get that many good freshmen on one team. Yeah. Okay. NIL, you can't afford yeah. it. No, nah, you're right. So that point. ain't happening. <laughs> How do you feel like? Yeah, why didn't you guys? Why aren't you suing? Why aren't the 2012 team suing for, <laughs> for so NIL money? money? All these dudes, hey, all to. these teams. I'm like, you got the 83 North Carolina State championship <laughs> team suing because <laughs> they're saying if you're giving money to those guys, why aren't you giving money to okay. us? Nah, Man, we gotta sue. We gotta sue. Start that we gotta sue, yeah, coach. We, we just start, start that coach. loss. Nah, we start Appreciate that. that. We, we started start that, coach. That today. <laughs> yeah, we start that. I was gonna ask you how you feel like the NILs. What kind of impact is it having on college basketball? You think it's a positive or a negative impact? Well, look, guys. I'm. I've tried to always been transformational. In other words, help you change your lives. Right. Um, now I'm holding you accountable. It doesn't mean that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to, but every thought, like when you guys made decisions to put your name in the draft, mm. how much did we really talk about it? A lot. Yeah. Like kind of you yeah, helped and, us, but you let us make our choice. Yeah, but yes, I'm yeah. not trying to get you to stay because it would have helped me. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. If it's right for you, then you go. Right. And then I'll figure the stuff out. And, right. and and how we played, like everybody's saying right now, you have to play this game one way. Are you nuts? The, you're going to have a team, and maybe they don't fit that. Right. So what, are you uh, screwing the kids? And then you're going to say it's them? They need to – you have a team, and you figure out how you're going to play. And then the training is to prepare you for the rest of your basketball life, how to be a great teammate. You guys learn that, mm -hmm. how to share, how to be about the other guys. That's the transformational stuff. Mm -hmm. Now it's a little bit transactional. I'm right. going to give you this and you got to do this. So what I'm trying to do is to still make this transformational. In other words, if you're going to come and play for me and it's all it's about nickels and dimes, then don't come here. Right. Right. If you're here to do better, now we've got to do our part with NIL and we do. But I don't want them coming here because of NIL. Right. You're coming uh, here because one, it's going to be hard. You're going to have other really good players that you got to play with, which is the rest of your basketball life. True. That you're going to have to carve your own niche. Now you think about you too. Did I run a lot of plays for you guys? No. You did for me though. You did you for me. Him. Yeah. You did for me. <laughs> yeah, because you Mr. only because you couldn't get your own shot off. So. <laughs> <laughs> so people will say if you go play for him can you get your own shot do you know how to be creative can right. you create for teammates so they create for you and but that's i just want to make sure i'm staying in that mode which is transformational right. and if we have six guys drafted from this team like your team mm -hmm. i'll be happy as hell but you know what that'll mean? We're in the final four. We won a national title. We're in the national championship game. That's how six guys get drafted. That is. Not, not That's true. With last year's team, if we would have advanced, five, six guys on that team would have been drafted. Are you right? Five, six instead of three. Yep. Instead of three. So winning matters mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. And you guys caught that and everybody ate. You know, everybody had their opportunity. Everybody was in the league. You had a chance. And again, maybe a player like that. We've had some guys. There's no reason now to leave early. Yeah. Because before, yeah. Uh, a lot of money. I got to yeah. go. What if uh -huh. I get hurt? Right. Well, now NIL, you go when you're going when it's right to go. Definitely you don't. It ain't ego shit now. It's okay. I'm still doing good. I can I can deal with yeah. another year. I'm not ready. I'm mentally not ready. So I want to make sure that we stay transformational, and this thing with me doesn't get transactional. Right. And we've been able to do it. I mean, I the the you know if they know you're about them, they'll be about each other. If they know you care, they're gonna listen. Uh, but they also want to know you know what the hell you're talking about. That you're gonna prepare me. And at the end of the day, you two know the other. I don't have a magic wand. 
I can't do that. We can, then you yeah. got to go fight your, hey man, yeah. was anything ever given to you when you left me? No, Hell never. no. Never. It wasn't you had it, to fight. It wasn't given to us when we was it, with you. You told us from day one, we got to no. earn everything. <laughs> yeah. And, yep. and you all did. Yep. Yo, coach, how, that's, how's Kenny, coach, how's Kenny Payne how's, doing? How's Kenny Payne doing? He doing? He's doing good. You know, I had to remind him, you're Kenny, you're Kenny, because, you know, this, this stuff in Louisville, crazy, okay? But I had to remind him, you're still Kenny effing Payne. You come with me and you be who you are. Right. And don't you, whatever happened there has nothing to do with what we're going to do for these kids here. And he's doing the same things he did with you guys. He's in the oh. gym all the time. He'll tell the truth. He keeps it real. You yeah, know what I'm totally. saying? Definitely. You, you still know. got the treadmill? Y'all still treadmill? Up to the treadmill? We, we, got, we got the other thing, too. What's that? <laughs> the, bike? The, uh, the climber. Oh, so oh, either yeah. you're on the climber, the oh. vertif, whatever that thing is, and yeah. the treadmill. He got both. But he's like a kid came in the other day and said, hey, I want to get a workout. No, no, no. So, kid, why? Because you were fighting the last coach and you were acting a fool. I'm not working you. I don't have time for that. Right. You want to be real? Come back in a week and maybe I'll work you out. I mean, again, getting guys to grow up. This team right now is a little immature. They all have answers. Did I do the excuse board with you guys? I don't, I don't think, think I had I think, to. I don't think so. Yeah. Nah. So, so I'll give it to you. When I had some teams that like every time you tried to coach them, they had an excuse. So I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you an excuse board, which will have numbers. So instead of giving me the whole excuse, number one, my girlfriend's a pain. Number two, I didn't sleep good last night. Number three, it's my teammates. Number four. So now you can, you can give me a double. You can go one and a three. <laughs> okay, let's go. I don't need the whole excuse. Right. You don't need to give me sentences. Just there they are. There are 10 of them. Which ones do you want to go? All right, I had a two, a seven, and a 10. All right, let's go. Keep going. Right. So, you know, they, when, they're, when they're immature, oh, yeah. that's the kind of stuff that they, yeah. they excuse. Everything somebody else. No, take responsibility. Be mature. Don't look right. for a way out. So... Coach, uh, how do you feel about having Tyler Eulis on the coaching staff with him being kind of in close proximity and age to the guys who actually play on the team? All right, this is a secret I can tell you guys. I can get older, but not everyone around me can get older. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, got, I got my son... You guys right. remember Brad. Yeah, so yeah, Brad yeah. and Tyler are in those two coaching spots. They can recruit, but the the you got your main guys, okay? And then you got two guys that are floor coaches, workout guys. They can do stuff. So Tyler, um, what happened, Tyler had an operation on his hip um, because he would have had a pretty long NBA career. Mm -hmm. But it hurt his uh, stomach muscles when they moved his hip. Uh, then he was in a car accident, almost lost his leg. Right. Mm -hmm. So finished up the uh, schoolwork. He came and worked for me the last two years as a student assistant getting his degree. Mm -hmm. And now I've hired him down here. And, I mean, it's a start. I mean, you know, I, a kid that was with me at – at Memphis is Joey Dorsey's in Minnesota. I mean, so, I mean, it, it's all this stuff, you know, we're, however I can help. I do, uh, with him, I'm being selfish. That dude coached my team his year. He played. Yeah. Oh, sheesh. Right. He coached the team now. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, what was great about him coaching the team. They paid me. <laughs> <laughs> You get, the big, you get the big money, coach. A win is a win. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yo, coach, don't forget about me. I need that, you know, I need that job, coach. Don't forget about me, coach. <laughs> me too. So I good. just said, did you tell Marcus I sent you the uh, 
The yeah, gear. I need my Packers. Thanks for the Packers, too. Thanks for the Packers. No, no. Box. You notice Duran has always been selfish, so he got his <laughs> stuff. He didn't he give me those. your address. He didn't give me your address. Your size is nothing, but right, he got yeah. his. And, and, and he's supposed asked to be my guy. Hey, <laughs> hey, and he asked for hoodies. I need yeah. hoodies too. Yo, I need, yo, I need that. Yo, extra large, coach. Extra large. <laughs> yo, all right. How, do you think the team you had with Book and Cat? Obviously, I'm not saying your best team, but do you think that was your most talented team? And how challenging was it to coach that team with that many players on it? Well, um, the the hard thing there, I can still remember being on an airplane with Kenny Payne when the Harrison twins said they're coming back. Mm -hmm. And then Willie Cauley Stein, who would have been a 20th pick, said, I'm coming back. And I went, why are you coming back? And they both said they needed more time. Well, you know I'm not going to tell them you can't come back and you're gone. Right. Okay. Right. And then Al uh, Alex Portress said, I'm coming back. What? <laughs> so now I got 10 players. And now I could play seven or eight and have the others. You just got to bide your time. Or I could play all 10. Right. You can't. You as players know. There's no 10-man rotation that works because yeah, no one – it, it hurts everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the year I platooned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I played five and five. Yeah. I know and I only I did it because I didn't want to hurt any players. Now, you know who wouldn't have played much who? if I didn't do it that way? Carl Towns. He was the worst of the big guys. <laughs> you ready? Jeez. Probably Devin, Devin Booker. Booker. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, they'll say – well, why didn't you start Devin? Well, first of all, the Twins, the year before, we were in the national championship right. game. Yeah. And I'm going to split up Twins? You won't believe this. They were born <laughs> the same time. <laughs> They're twins. They know each other. I'm not going to split them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second thing we did was whoever started the game, the other five started the second half. Right. If you want to stay on the court, you had to hold a team under six points. And instead oh, wow. of coming out, I just left you in. Yeah. Right? So we were trying to do stuff. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it was the hardest year for me to coach because I was trying to take care of 10 players. Now, do you think every college recruiter used it against us? Sure. Well, you want to go there and play 20 minutes? I'll play you 35 minutes. You only go play 20. I did it one time in my career, and it was only because it's the only way I could figure out how do I play 10. Now, if I remember right, I think, and then 11 and 12 were Dom and Derek Willis, who are still playing professionally in Europe. No, they were right. 11th and 12th man. Yeah. And so you're talking about every player ended up being professional. I think nine out of 10 were NBA players. Uh, the funny one is Devin Booker hit me four years later. And he said, would you have started me on senior night? I started him the second half of every game. But, you know, he was busting my chops about not starting. Right. But you know what? It's the only way I could figure out. With you guys, it was really a lot easier because we played Kyle some to let him go in and shoot balls, if you remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And basically, we played six people. Six. six. That's it. And the best teams that I've coached, six people. Did, I played six. Coach Kyle, didn't, didn't D Lamb come off the bench? It's freshman year. Yeah, he brought me off the bench freshman year, start of the season. He's lucky he was coming off the bench his freshman year. <laughs> you brought me off the bench, Coach, but it was cool, though. I figured it out. I figured it out. Even out. He and, he and uh, Terrence, I'm telling you, you talk about talented in different ways, but really talented. You know, Duran could just go get buckets. He can do it different ways. Uh, you, he knew how to read screens and all that. 
Terrence was a six nine. Monster. I don't even know what he was. Uh, he was could a could rebound, could yeah. dunk on you. You could put him in the middle of a zone. He can make passes. He could score. He could shoot threes. Mm -hmm. He was good. He was a monster. He it, was good. The the way the way the pieces on that team worked, it was like everybody complimented each other's other parts of people's games. It was a that was an amazing year. All right, I'm gonna give you one story that made what that team was and why we won a national title. In that game against Vanderbilt, the championship of the SEC, Michael Kidd Gilchrist comes in to me and says, Coach, this is like 30 minutes before the game. I want you to start Darius in my place. Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, yep. yeah, I remember that. He said that to me. And I go, wait a minute. Why are you saying this? Are you sick? Are you hurt? No. Mm -hmm. Darius, in the first two games, was like 0 for 15. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need him to win a national title. Definitely. Michael Kidd Gilchrist was 17 years old. Okay? <laughs> now, Darius, the background, the year before, we won the tournament. You remember, Duran? And yeah, Darius was the MVP. MVP. Yeah. He was the MVP. Mm -hmm. And now this year, he can't get a basket. So I say, all right, I'm going to start him. He goes, he took about 15, 16 shots. He probably, I think he went five or something, maybe six for 15. Mm -hmm. Michael, who'd never been off, come off the bench the whole, he started every game, was came in and fouled, was uncomfortable, didn't play. We end up losing that game. But because of that, Darius Miller, the rest of the NCAA tournament, played out of his mind. He, he was did. so confident, and he was confident because Michael made him confident, and Michael gave up his spot for Darius. I'm not sure that that's would dope. happen today. That's right. dope. That, that's that's powerful that's, now. That's, that's the kind of team that's, we really had, right. bro. Like everybody just we just liked each other, bro. Flat out, we just liked each other. We all got along. That's the kind of team we had. So so when Michael said that, I went to. Marcus, I said, Marcus, how about he starts in your place? Man, you're crazy. <laughs> and I said, how about <laughs> now, Ma, I said, how about you? Uh, how about how about you, Duran? He's like, yeah, right. No I'm, way. No <laughs> way. Nah. No way that's fly with him. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. So I know you had Marcus Canby and you had Anthony Davis. Did you see any similarities in their game in college? Not in the pros, just in college. And did that help you coach AD already having Marcus Canby? Well, um, they both went from 6'3 to 6'10. Yeah. Well, so they oh. both had they they both had like guard skills. Right. And so when I'm recruiting, if I see this long kid and he's doing this, I said, he went from 6'3 to 6'9, didn't he? <laughs> and they'll always tell me, yeah, got guard skills. He never grew up like he was a big man. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... Marcus Camby is one of the top 50 players in the history of college basketball because he led UMass right. to a Final Four. And you ready? We were number one in the country for two years. UMass. Yeah. yeah UMass. Because that, of him. That says a lot. Now, I'm not saying, like right now on my campus here, Lou Rowe is here. He came in for a couple days. I'm not saying Lou Rowe was a hell of a player now. He was a warrior. But we couldn't advance until we got Camby. Right. We'd yeah. be a Sweet 16, Elite Eight, but we weren't winning the national title and we weren't going to be number one in the country. So he, yes, he helped, but they were totally different. Yeah. They were, you know, I think um, Anthony was more mobile. The game was different how we coached it back then. When I recruited Marcus Camby, he said, uh, I said, so what position do you want to play? And he was 6'11". He said, I want to be a shooting guard. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I really wanted this kid. And, you know, I couldn't lie to him. So I told him, okay, you'll be a shooting guard. But I want you to know we post up our shooting guards a lot. <laughs> just so you can. <laughs> um, when I went in the home with Anthony, Anthony basically said, I don't care where you play me. I were in my way, all that stuff. I just want to win. Right. And I'm like, we got to get this kid, you know. And and he was a buck ninety. You know what he was? Had one eyebrow. 
He had one eyebrow, <laughs> went straight across his head. <laughs> and he was about, what was he? Seriously, was he 190? He probably maybe? 190, for sure. He, for sure. Every bit of 190. <laughs> and by the end of the year, he started filling out. You remember? Right. He yeah. wanted to shoot all threes, and we made him get around to goal. And then he started <laughs> shooting jump hooks. You remember? Right. He yeah. shooting yeah. lefty from, jump hooks. from Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Learned from Kyle. Yep. But it was, uh, yeah, that that helped. But they're, every one of you guys are different. When you're just trying to say what's his best version look like, um, the advantage, you know, if I've I've coached so many good players like you guys, I'm not. I want to use it. To, I'm not intimidated by it, and I know I got a job to do. Whether it's you two or whoever it is, is how do I elevate? How do we add value? How about this one? How do we play to make sure that they benefit by this? Right, and it's always different. Yeah. Like with your team, if we tried to shoot 33s, we wouldn't have won a national title. Well, yeah, but you got to play that way. No, that's not true. Yeah. Last year, we shot a lot of threes. You know why? Because it was the best way for that team to play. We led the nation in three-point shooting. All right. okay. um, but that was that team. This team, I'm coaching this year. I want them to shoot probably 25, 30 maybe a game from yeah. three-point line. <laughs> but we went to the foul line last night 28 times. I want right. that. Right. You know, go get some car crashes. You right. know, get in there. So. Yeah. But uh, Reed Shepard, I know he had the season went for him, but did you know that he was going to be like that to start it off? He didn't know <laughs> that he was going to be that. <laughs> I asked him after the season, did you think you would lead us in minutes? He said, Coach, I thought I'd be carrying the gear to the bus. I didn't think I was going to leave. And then I said, did you think you'd leave after a year? No. I thought I'd be a four-year guy and and hopefully at the end of my career be a captain. But let me tell you what he did. Dude lived in the gym. Yeah. Um, we had a a shooting machine that uh, a NOAA. Mm -hmm. It judges your shot, your release, your arc, your this. Kid lived on it. Ended up shooting 51% from the three. Great hands. Um, a good athlete. Could jump, but not a great athlete. Not He's not that guy. But he, again, great teammate. Both. How about this one? He and Robert Dillingham came off the bench. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. Third pick of the draft. Eighth pick of the draft. Lottery. Would you yeah. like that or to start? Take me off the bench. <laughs> Take me off the bench, please. The bench. <laughs> yep. that, that was, was one, of, that was one of my questions. That you know, was, um, I mean, it's. In, um, 2000, in 2011, um, that team, um, Ennis Cantor, me, T. Jones, B. Knight, you think if Ennis would have played that year, we would have won a championship? Well, what makes me mad is the NCAA did that probably to, to throw a dart at me. Um, and, but they relented and made a big mistake. They let him practice with us. Do you remember that? I remember that. It got Josh better, so, everybody better. Set, what you just said happened. It, it so got, all of a sudden, Josh, who's a good player, ended up getting drafted by the Knicks and they <laughs> traded to get a better <laughs> position uh, for uh, him. Uh, uh, and he got drafted by the Knicks. And that's because Ennis went at him every day, and the kid got better. Yeah. And with Ennis, um, Ennis was really good. We probably mm -hmm. could have won the national championship that year. But for us to get there um, and how we got there, I mean, if you remember, tough. Brandon Knight missed every game winner. We lost five or six games where he missed the last shot. Am I right? No, you're right. And right. we were on him to keep shooting. And then we got in the NCAA tournament. What did he do? Hit a game winner. Bang a game man. winner. Bang <laughs> winner. Bang winner. Yeah, and that's Ohio how State. we advance. Mm -hmm. how, what do you think? You may say I can still remember this. As a 45-year-old, my memory is still pretty good. <laughs> He's shot. <laughs> so, so, Coach, we, we have to ask you, why did you leave Kentucky? I had 15 great years there. There's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and I had no intention, but 
when you're approached by other people, you're going to listen. And the more I listened, I'm like, you know what? I want one more adventure. I want to help 25 to 30 more players. And I need a tailwind. It's never about fans and media and all that. Look, we all played the sport. If you, How could I have done it this long if that's all I worried about? So it wasn't. But you need a tailwind. You need everybody on the same page to do what we did. Um, and so I looked at it and I said, you know what? Let me do this one more time. And, and uh, it's, a, it's an adventure. But it's nothing is changing. I want to help 25 to 30 more families. And then they'll say, he don't care about winning. You two played for me. Do I care yeah. about winning? Uh, you definitely do. You care about it. You definitely care about winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, don't tell me. And if I care about you, guess what? You'll care about winning because you know right. I got you back. And so you start caring about each other. And I, I think it's funny where, you know, well, he doesn't care about winning. He only cares about the kids. Well, that's okay. If you want to throw that at me, I'll take it. But the reality, mm -hmm. one more games, more Final Fours, national team, more, more, more league championships. Uh -huh. So yeah. shut your Talk mouth. Him, coach. You Let can do that's both. What we want to hear. That's, <laughs> what Talk, coach. Wait, coach. that's what I've been waiting to hear. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, I guess if you just were in a in a in an era uh, era where if you say things enough, it becomes true. So just say it. Yeah. And then you have people that don't understand that have never had young children that you are responsible for mm -hmm. and and you you got to hold them accountable and you can't do it for them they're going to have to learn lessons along the way right, coach right, cal thanks, thank you so much good luck in right, the coach. season we'll be in touch thank you man appreciate it thank you coach thanks, all right God, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in to the Backcourt Podcast. Like, share, and subscribe, like, man. Hit the please, button. Please, like, share, subscribe. subscribe. And we'll, button. we'll see y'all shortly. Yes,